Now we begin episode four, Turnabout Reminiscence. Kay Faraday, the young lady who calls herself the second Yadagarasu. The piece of cloth that she conjured up has taken me back to many years ago. Seven years earlier. Yeah, that's right. I did. I killed the guy. But it was the great thief Yadagarasu that told me to do it. Objection. I asked the defendant, just what exactly are you trying to say? Don't you get it? I know the true identity of the Yadagarasu. The Yadagarasu is the man standing over there at the prosecutor's bench. Are you saying that I'm the Yadagarasu? Don't you dare deny it. You told me to kill him when you snuck into the embassy. Are you claiming that Mr. Faraday is the Yadagarasu? That's exactly what I'm saying. Objection! Mr. Rell, I think we've heard just about enough out of you. Your Honor, please listen to me. I'm telling the truth. You've got to believe me! <laughs> In accordance with the defendant's accusation, a new prosecutor shall be called to replace Mr. Farday. This court will be in recess until the new prosecutor is ready. September 10th, 3.20 p.m., District Court, 3rd Floor Lobby. It's almost time for me to enter the courtroom. And so it is that my first assignment as a prosecutor will be as a replacement for a prosecutor who has been accused by the defendant. Edgeworth. Sir. Have you read over all of the documents regarding this trial? Yes, sir. I've memorized everything there is to know. Very good. The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is just about complete. Edgeworth, always bear in mind that as your mentor, I, Manfred von Karma, will accept nothing short of perfection. I understand, sir. To have the chance to stand in court at such an early stage in my career, I am honored and proud. As I have watched over your studies, I am giving you this very rare chance. Prove yourself. Crush the defendant's pathetic lies into oblivion. Yes, sir. That such a legendary prosecutor will be watching and judging my performance. I have to be perfect in every way. Hmm. Today's trial should have ended in just one minute. Because the defendant was picked up by the security camera, correct? Exactly. The killer had the gall to say that he only killed because he was instructed to do so. Even more outrageous is his claim that the case prosecutor, Bern Faraday, gave the order. Ha! Faraday is such a fool. He's been cornered by his very own prey. Sir, are you an acquaintance of Mr. Bern Faraday? <laughs> he is a pathetic man who speaks nothing but nonsense. Nonsense? He once tried to explain to me a way of punishing those who cannot be brought to court. Those who cannot be brought to court. That is nonsense, for no man is above the law. Well, there are always a few exceptions. However, there is no reason to even deal with such individuals. A prosecutor is a guardian of the court, one with no obligation to outside matters. Thus, there is no reason to deal with such individuals, I see. Edgeworth, disgracing yourself as Faraday as will not be forgiven. Have no fear. I will not let you down, sir. In place of the accused prosecutor Bern Faraday, I'll prove the defendant's guilt. Very good. 
I've secured an hour of recess for you to prepare to do just that. Show them all the power of Von Karma. So, have you achieved a firm understanding of the case? Yes, sir. I have memorized everything that is written down in the case files. Well then, explain the case to me. I want to see if you really know what you're talking about. Understood. A murder was committed on September 8th in front of the Cardopian Embassy. The victim, Mr. Deedman, was a staff member of the Embassy. The defendant in this case, Mr. Mackrell, was held for questioning the night of the incident as he was deemed suspicious. He was quickly placed under arrest for possession of the murder weapon, a gun. Furthermore, at the time of the murder, the great thief, Yaragarasu, had successfully infiltrated the Cardopian Embassy as well. At first, Rel claimed that he himself was the Yadagarasu, but that he did not kill Deedman. I wonder what he expected to gain from such a desperate lie. It's possible that he wants to go down while in the spotlight, if he is found guilty. There truly is no limit of people's inanity. But I digress. Continue, Andrew. Yes, sir. During the trial, the prosecution presented the security footage that captured the murder. The footage clearly showed Mr. Rell as the murderer. The act, of, the act of Mr. Rell firing the gun could be clearly seen from the visitor's gallery. Upon seeing that, the defendant retracted his statement and admitted to the murder. I did it because I was told to, by the real Yadagarasu, Burn Fard. Hmm, that sounds about right. However, you've forgotten one thing. While this may appear to simply be the murderer of a Cardopian Embassy staff member, people are actually referring to it as the second KG-8 incident. The second KG-8 incident? I'm very sorry, sir. I fear I failed to study hard enough. <laughs> well, even among the police, it's information that only a select few are privy to. Could you please enlighten me, sir? Sir, what do you mean by the second KG-8 incident? In order for me to tell you that, you must first learn about the original case. Take a look at these documents. This is a three-year-old newspaper. You have heard of the Amano Group scandal before, correct? Yes, I have. The secretary of Ernest Amano, the Amano Group's director, was arrested on a suspicion of smuggling. Correct. Seseyu was an employee of the Amano Group, and the sole witness to the smuggling operation. It was she who brought the crime to light. However, Miss Yu was silenced before she could testify in court. Wasn't a Kadapian Embassy staff member arrested for the murder? Yes. A Kadapian by the name of Manny Koshin was the suspect. However, due to lack of evidence, the case went unresolved. The lack of evidence? Ha! If only I was in charge of the case, I would have done everything in my power to prove his guilt. To make sure that all criminals are found guilty. My mentor really is dedicated. Faraday was the prosecutor on the case then, and he was as pathetic as ever. Mr. Faraday was in charge of the KG-8 incident as well? That's right. And now, once again, the victim of the case you are currently assigned to was someone who was scheduled to testify against that smuggling organization. And just like last time, the victim was murdered right before he was to testify. You're catching on. The victim was murdered just before his day in court against the smuggling organization. Events are occurring almost exactly the same way as they did in the KG-8 incident. So that's why it is being called the second KG-8 incident? Yes. Yet there is one difference between the two incidents. What would that be? The so-called noble thief that is sending everyone into an uproar. The great thief, Yaragarasu. Yaragarasu? I better find out more. If it is true that the Yaragarasu showed up at the Kadapian Embassy, what could he sh or she have been after? <laughs> No doubt to steal any suspicious accounting records and release them publicly. Or more likely to steal secrets from the Kadapian Embassy itself. 
since the item that the Yadagarasu stole from there was sent to the police. What was it that the Yadagarasu sent to the police? I don't know the details. Anything related to the Yadagarasu is getting the top secret treatment. Still, I find it very ironic. By returning the stolen item to the police, it was proof positive that the Yadagarasu had infiltrated the embassy on the same day the staff member was killed. Criminals have a way of incriminating themselves, wouldn't you say? That would have to be the first time the Yadagarasu has left evidence behind, correct? Yes, indeed. If you wish to learn more about the Yadagarasu, then I suggest you ask Fard. Mr. Fard? He happens to be the prosecutor in charge of the Yadagarasu case as well. He's the prosecutor in charge of both the KG-8 incident and the Yanagarasu case. Mr. Fade really has a lot on his plate. What is it, little girl? You're scary, mister. <laughs> Did you need something? Um, I want to trade these coins with you. A fistful of dimes, quarters, and pennies. But it looks like you've exactly a dollar. Is this what you want? Thanks! That's exactly what I needed! Could that child be here to watch the trial? How disrespectful for a child like that to be running around inside the courthouse! Does no one have respect for this country's judicial system anymore? The paperwork for the prosecutor's substitution is complete. Why you? Do you even know how much time there is left before the trial resumes? I... I'm so sorry. I can have you mopping up this courthouse instead of protecting it in an instant. Uh, it's no bother, sir. Not being completely prepared could prove to be a perfect handicap for me. <laughs> a proud one you are. You had better collect the evidence from Farley and prepare yourself. It's time for your debut, Edgeworth. September 10th, 4 p.m., District Court, courtroom number three. Just what is going on? Why isn't Faraday here yet? How is it possible that the defense is not prepared yet either? Bailiff, where is Mr. Faraday? I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Ah, you must be the one Mr. Bon Karma recommended. I hear this will be your first trial. I look forward to seeing how you perform. Oh, by the way, was there someone celebrating a birthday during the recess? I could have sworn that I heard a popper going off. Come to think of it, the other day with my grandson. Sir, it looks like the trial is about to resume, however. Yes, it will be all but impossible to prove the witness a liar without the evidence from Farday. When is that blasted buffoon up to? It's an emergency, sirs! Silence! There shall be no yelling in this sacred hall of law. Bailiff, remove that man from this courtroom at once. Please, wait. You have to listen to me. There's an emergency. Defendant lobby number two, Mr. Faraday and defendant. The two of them, they're, they're both dead, your honor. What? 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 September 10th, District Court, Hallway. Stay back. <sighs> no one's allowed on the crime scene, period. Just who does this oddball think he is? This is becoming quite the hot spot. Isn't she Mr. Rell's defense attorney? Hey, you! No running in the hallway, pal! 
And who are you to tell me what to do? I'll never find out what's going on like this. It's time for some civil discourse. And you are... Who, me? Hey, pal. It's common courtesy to tell someone your name first before asking this. Point taken. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I am a district prosecutor. Prosecutor? Never seen a prosecutor as young as you, pal. I've told you my name, now would you mind telling me yours? Detective Dick Gumshoe. And just recently, I achieved my dream of becoming a detective. More than a dream. It's what I was born to do. Wait, maybe I should check and make sure I'm not really in some crazy dream first. This detective is entirely too excited to be at a murder scene. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling me what you know about the incident? You know that I don't have to tell you anything, right? I know that. But it would behoove you to fill me in on what you know. Wow, you're a proud one for such a youngster, aren't you? Well, anyway, Detective Bat is the one in charge. So you're just gonna have to ask him for all the details, okay? As for me, I was guarding the door to defendant lobby number two. Hmm. So you were on guard, detail. Did you notice anything strange while you were on duty? Well, I freaked out when I heard a gunshot, and then I kind of froze. Your detective and a measly gunshot scared you that much? Then again, I can hardly claim to not know what it's like to hear one in close range. Then, Detective Bad came running to the scene. We went into lobby number two together and both men were lying there, dead. Is that everything? Hmm? Yeah, that's it. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Interesting. Other than the gunshot, he didn't hear a single sound of commotion. Yeah, that's that. Do you have a minute? You know I'm not really into talking to people I don't know. Especially at a time like this. Ah, I apologize for not introducing myself before bothering you. My name is Miles Edgeworth. I was to take Mr. Faraday's place in court. Edgeworth, huh? Never heard of you. So Faraday's substitute is a newbie, huh? I'll have you know, madam, that I studied under Manfred von Karma. Do not take me for some naive novice. Do not take me for some naive novice. <laughs> so you're a student of Von Karma. I should have... Those clothes are a dead giveaway. Stop right there. These are the garments of one who gallantly presents the facts. Ah, thanks for the great laugh. But try not to make me laugh so much, okay? I wasn't trying to do anything of a sort. <laughs> just kidding. I was just goofing around. By the way, do you know who I am? My name is Callisto Yu. And if you're telling the truth, then we were about to go head to head in court. Ah, but of course. I have heard much about you, Miss Yu. <laughs> ah, but of course. I have heard much about you. You're a regular Shakespeare. Did I say something funny? I'd like you to update me on the situation. I don't really know anything. Why don't you try talking to those detectives over there? If that's the case, then why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? It's just that the way you speak is so tactless. The person I was going against in court only until a little while ago was just murder. It's not like I could go back into the courtroom pretending as though nothing happened. That's a good point. I apologize for asking such an insensitive question. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Now with that done, now we talk to him. Excuse me, but who are you? Detective Tyrell Bath. Homicide. I was informed of the situation and came as quickly as possible. So how did you arrive and inspect the body before me? Faraday requested for me to testify in the trial. Plain and simple. Mr. Faraday requested that you be here? I've already contacted HQ about the situation. I've got nothing to say to you, kid. K 
hit! I'm Mr. Faraday's substitute in today's trial. Therefore, I insist that you update me on the situation. I can't back down here. I have a right to know. Do I need to teach you a thing or two about how to talk to adults, kid? Is he threatening me? Is he going for his gun? It's just a mirror! How dare he trick me like that! Faraday was stabbed to death with some kind of blade, and he had a gun in his hand. The other man, Mr. Mackrell, was shot and killed. He was found holding a bloody knife in his hand. Was there anyone else who went into defendant lobby number two? Yeah, that big lug over there. His name's Gumshoe. He was in charge of guarding the place. He's claiming that no one else entered the room. If that's the case, then they must have killed each other, correct? Maybe. Such impudence. This guy is really testing my patience. Why was I not informed that you were going to testify in court? Homicides aren't my only gig. The Yadagarasu case is also one of my assignments. So you were called upon to comment on the Yadagarasu's characteristics, in order to assess if Mr. Faraday really was the Yadagarasu or not? Well, well. Looks like you just might have a brain after all in that head of yours, son. Son! I'm not your son, Pops! Miss you. There is someone here who wishes to see you. Who is it? A Kadapian Embassy staff member by the name of Manny Kochi. What's going on? Detective Bad and Miss Yu's moods just changed all of a sudden. Wait a second. Wasn't Manny coaching? I'll be right there. It's nice to see you again, Miss Yu. Why are you here? I have no desire to ever see you again. No, no. Actually, would you mind stepping outside for a brief chat? Fine. Let's go. Bad! Von Karma. It's been a long time. I knew you would show up. You usually do when the Yadagarasu's involved, and I see this case is no exception. Do you know Detective Bad, sir? Yes. He's like an old bloodhound that never leaves the scene of a crime. If only he would get a promotion and move on. It's the crime scene where a detective is most useful and effective. <laughs> it's not like I don't know that. Moving on though, Bad. The man I, that I just passed by. Was he not the suspect from the KG-8 incident? So I was right. Just what is that man doing wandering around here? That far day. I can't believe he let such an easy catch get away. Imbecile! I would have proved his guilt in three minutes! Von Karma! I think you've said enough for now. It's in poor taste to speak like that about the departed. <laughs> Very well. Back on topic. I'm placing Edgeworth in charge of the investigation. Objection! him in charge. Francisco, what are you doing here? I'm here for summer vacation. What else? Francisca von Karma. So she is here on vacation from Germany. She is the daughter of Manfred von Karma and a student of his, who is also junior to me. You're the one who's junior to me, and don't you forget it. You're not conveniently avoiding the bar examination, are you? Ha! If you were able to pass, then I'll have absolutely no trouble at all. I'll never allow myself to lose to you. Never! Why does she always have to be this competitive? Anyway, Papa, are you really assigning Miles Edgeworth to cover the case? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Well, you know, I'm close to becoming a prosecutor myself. And I am 100% confident that I can do a better job than him. 
that's just like Francisca. She has no problem bad-mouthing someone right in front of her. Bad. Yeah. These two will be conducting the investigation. What? You want me to let both of these kids loose on the crime scene? Ha! This is a perfect opportunity for them to work on their prosecutorial skills. The crime scene is not a place for children to be messing around in. I'm the one with the authority over this crime scene, Bad. And I will not tolerate complaining. <sighs> Edgeworth! Francisca! I leave this case to the two of you. Understood, sir. Yes, Papa. I'll go take care of the paperwork now. Remember, I'll accept nothing but a perfect report from the both of you. Do not disappoint me! Hold up, Von Karma! I still haven't agreed to this! Miles Edgeworth. It's been quite some time, Francisca. This will be the perfect chance for us. To see which of us is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. Would it kill you to at least say hello? Ugh. Um, long time OC. Very good. Just because you became a prosecutor first, doesn't mean you can act all proud. She hasn't changed a bit. Miles Edgeworth, as I was saying, we shall see which one of us is worthy of the Von Karma name. For crying out loud, I've been reduced to a babysitter. It looks like Mr. Von Karma was successful in convincing the detective. That's just like him. He never fails. Now, I'd appreciate if you could quickly run me through the facts, Detective Bat. You're better off checking things out on your own. Very well. Seems like getting help from Detective Bat will be a most arduous task. September 10th, 4.15 p.m., District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. <laughs> Is the only real explanation that they killed each other simultaneously? Miles Edgeworth, you should listen to someone until they are finished talking. Um, what are you talking about? I'll only say it one more time. This is a competition to see who is truly worthy of the Von Karma name. A competition? The person that figures out the truth first wins. Hmm. So the person who doesn't discover the truth is a dishonor to the name? Exactly. I don't care that you became a prosecutor before me. I simply refuse to hear any more foolish things coming from your foolishly foolish mouth. Hmm. <laughs> Fine. Whatever makes you happy. Can I take that as you accepting my challenge? Once again, whatever makes you happy. Ha! Well then, let's begin the investigation. I'm going to find the perfect evidence and prettily present it like the professional I am. Competing to discover the truth behind a crime. How delightfully childish. You kids, over there, hold it! Kid? Ha! Serves you right, Miles. He just called you a kid. I said kids, kid. How dare you call me a kid as well! I'll do what I please, and I won't allow you to cause a ruckus on my crime scene. Hey, big guy, you're going to watch over these two. Yes, sir! Detective Bad, sir! Now do what I say from now on, kids, okay? You'd better not get in our way, Scrappy. You'll feel the bite of my whip if you do. <laughs> then you, prosecutor boy. Let's get your investigation started already, all right? Great. Now even that detective is treating me like a child. All right, it's time to get investigated. Get a move on, prosecutor boy. My name is Miles Edgeworth. And if you were to call me Prosecutor Boy one more time, it would be my duty as a prosecutor to look into your monthly salary. What? And what would you do with my salary after you saw how much it was? That's up to you now, isn't it? Really? Sounds good, pal. He's so naive. Begin investigation. 
Detective Bad. May I have a word with you? What is it? It appears that both a knife and a gun were used as murder weapons. Yeah, it does. That leads us to our first question of the investigation. Where did the men acquire the weapons? The gun was inside of Faraday's bag. It was a piece of evidence that was presented in the trial earlier today. It was used to kill the Kadapian Embassy staff member. But I never heard anything about the knife. Mr. Rell was being held by the police. There's no way he could have brought it in. Which means it's possible that Faraday had the knife on him from the start as well. Could it have been a piece of evidence that had yet to be presented? But then, why doesn't Detective Bat know about it? Wait, what if it's possible that Mr. Faraday brought the knife in under the guise of prosecutorial evidence? He could have then brought it out and attacked Mr. Rao with it. Huh? Maybe you've got a brain in there after all, kid. <laughs> Is he going to treat me like a child forever? Looks like Mr. Faraday attacked Mr. Rao first, who then counterattacked. That's the only logical conclusion you can draw from a scene like this. Not yet. I feel that it's much too early to be drawing conclusions already. I must first find conclusive evidence so as to protect the honor of the Von Karma name. The window is open, and <laughs> there's a fresh flowery scent in the air. Ugh, the flowers in the garden down there are so gross and ghastly. Do you think maybe you could try offering something useful for Jay? Well, at least there's no way someone escaped through this window, pal. They wouldn't wake up and smell the flowers after a fall from the third floor. Are you willfully ignoring the fact that there are also iron bars on the windows? Yeah, I guess there's that, too. Either way, no one could get through these windows, right? They thought of everything when they were designing this courthouse. Very nice. Yes. Yes, they did. There are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set, too, but there doesn't seem to be any sign of a disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe they were super quiet in their scuffle? After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags scattered on the floor are throwing this off. It looks like Mr. Faraday fell on top of Mr. Rell. At first glance, it seems like they must have killed each other, however. Using logic, the only logical conclusion is... Aha! Uh -huh. What was that outburst for? My detective's instinct just hit me real hard. It was Mr. Rell that fell first, see? You don't need a detective's instinct for that. It's common sense. But I suppose you won't know much more than that until after I examine the bodies. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Looks like Mr. Faraday died while holding the gun in his right hand. So he shot Mr. Rell and then fell on top of him while still gripping onto the gun? I guess that does seem kind of strange, huh? I mean, why would Mr. Faraday know how to fire a gun? It's not exactly rock. It's not exactly rocket science. Even I know how to pull the trigger. Although I doubt I'll ever need to use one. I hope I never have to fire a gun either, pal. But it sure does look cool to hold a gun in your hands. It appears that the police's screening procedures need a thorough review. Anyway, I should jot down some notes about the handgun in Mr. Faraday's hands. Looks like Mr. Rell died with a knife in his hand. There's some blood stuck on it. And he must have used this as a weapon. Yep, no doubt about it. Was Mr. Faraday carrying this on his passage? Did he bring this as a piece of evidence for the trial? Or did he bring, with, bring it with a very different intention in mind? I should jot down some notes about it. Hmm? Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, Detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally, I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy... Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? 
His hand is all blacked out here, see? I wonder what it could be. Hmm. If you look closely, this blotching pattern resembles an ink stain. An ink stain? Yes. I usually get ink on my own hand when I use my feather pen. A feather pen? Never seen one before. Sure you aren't just making it up, pal? Mr. Sorrell's cause of death was be from being shot, correct? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell with him lying face down. Death is bad enough, but it's truly lamentable that someone would try to hide the truth. Um, are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Rell's cause of death with his body position like that. Detective Fat, I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail, if possible. What's this? You're not able to form a theory with them the way they are? I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to find the perfect evidence, don't you? Hmm. I suppose you do have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it! Labby. Yes, sir. We've taken enough photos of the scene, sir. And there you have it. Do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of a crime scene is the work of a detective, so don't touch a thing. Hey, big fella, turn over the bodies for me, will ya? Okay. Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Gumshoe, do not get emotionally involved. Remember, you're a detective. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. I won't rest until I've inspected. Yeah, I keep saying that. There's a knife wound in his chest here, see? I wonder if the wound matches the knife Mr. Rell is hiding. Labby. Yes, sir. Verifying now, sir. Make it quick. From the looks of things, one could deduce that the knife Mr. Rell is holding in is what killed Mr. Faraday. There's something in his breast pocket. It's a fountain pen. Hey, you know I always keep a pencil behind my ear. It's because Detective Fat is always telling me. You should always write your name on everything you own. Yes, somehow you do strike me as quite a forgetful individual. It looks like Mr. Fade was stabbed with this knife that Mr. Rell is holding. Ouch! What's wrong, detectives? My stomach started to hurt just from thinking about being stabbed. Just keep your mind on the case, all right? Indeed. Shot in the chest. Takes some guts to fire a gun in a courthouse. I mean, I've been the detective for a whole week and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There aren't any burn marks on his clothes. That must be... Wait! Burn marks? A round grows very hot as it is discharged from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks are usually left when a shot is fired from point blank range. Ergo, Mr. Rell must have been shot from at least a yard or two away. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal. Apparently, this detective has as much common knowledge as your everyday marsupial. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Mr. Faraday took the gun and the knife out from today's trousers. Then he aimed the gun at Mr. Rell and fired. However, Mr. Rell managed to grab the knife and counter Mr. Faraday while being shot. Then the two men fell together where they stood. That is my theory in any case. What a crazy way to go. Still, something about that explanation just doesn't seem right. Hmm, I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what happened here. Now it's time to put the pieces together. Ink stain with the fountain pen in the pocket. That splotch on Mr. Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from his fountain pen. Ooh, let's ask the lab guy. Detective Gumshoe, I confirm that the substance on Mr. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen. I see, good work. Uh, you know, I've always wanted to say that. Even if it was just one time in my life. If Mr. Faraday wrote with his fountain pen in his left hand, 
I think it's fair to assume he was left-handed. It appears that Mr. Farday's pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal. Now we take the neat and tidy table with the plastic bags thrown about. There is a very tidy pile of plastic bags on the table, and yet a portion of them wound up scattered on the floor as well. It's not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during a struggle, in which case, might there not be another explanation as to how they got there? Um, another reason? I believe it's possible that the blood on the outside of the bag is related somehow. Yeah, please get that blood away from me, pal! Detective Gumshoe, whose blood is on this bag? Um, hold on, let me ask the lab. Alright, please hurry. Wait till you get a load of this, pal. It's Mr. Faraday's. Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag either. Hmm. It would appear that this bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so. I'll leave it in your hands, pal. Now let's return back to investigating. I already checked this area either, but it never hurts to take another look. Mr. Farde is holding a gun in his right hand. That's the one Mr. Rell got blown away by, right? Labby. Labby, your answer? Yes, sir. We found that the ballistic markings do match that gun. Oh, uh, ballistic markings are... Uh... Are the figurative fingerprints a gun leaves on a bullet when fired? Every gun leaves its own unique ballistic markings. Therefore, by looking at the markings on a bullet, you can tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it. Of course I already knew all about that, pal. Maybe you'd be better off going back to the academy. Yeah, come on, sir! Cut me some slack, will ya? So the bullet that was fired from this gun is what fell, Mr. Rao. I know. And yet... First, he killed the Kadapian Embassy staff member, then he was murdered himself. This guy wasn't exactly an angel. Oh? What makes you say that? Well, he's been hauled into the precinct several times for theft and assault, pal. So yeah, he's definitely the type to have committed a murder or two. Well, he did admit to killing Mr. Deed. Hey, good point, pal. I knew my detective's intuition was telling me something. Detective's intuition? Yep. You know about it? It's a special feeling that all the tech. We don't have time for this conversation right now. Let's return to the investigation. Mr. Farday, how ironic it is for him to lose his life in a courthouse. Yeah, why did it have to be like this? I don't know what to say. I can't believe this happened while I was on watch, pal. Rather than beating yourself up, you should spend your time continuing the investigation. Didn't you become a detective in order to solve crimes? Yeah. Then get back to work. Find out the cause of his murder. Right. I'm on it, pal. Checked every nook and cranny. Yet, there's nothing else here. Yep, every nook and cranny. My Missing something? What gives? What gives, I swear. Ah, I see. Did you figure something out? This is a competition, Miles, and as such I appreciate it if you didn't talk to me. As you wish. Detective Bad, do you have any thoughts on the case? Farday and Rel. It looks like they killed each other to me. Although, there are a few things that just don't seem right. Mm -hmm. And what would they be? <laughs> Why don't you try thinking on your own first before you bother me, boy? Now I've been downgraded just boy! Well, at least you're not Atreus. There's some stuff in the bag, pal. I suppose this was Mr. Faraday's bag. It's probably the trial evidence I was supposed to collect for him. This is the evidence? Ugh, I better not touch it. I'll leave prints on it. Do you just not pay attention to anything you do? Yeah, what gives? 
I've already investigated the bodies. What am I missing? Hmm? Why are there plastic bags scattered all around? Those bags are for keeping evidence safe, pal. I know that much, Detective. You sure are good at this stuff, aren't you, pal? Normally, I'd be happy when someone compliments me, but when it's this guy... Anyway, could these plastic bags be evidence of a fight between the two men? Yeah, we already did. We already figured that out. This decorative plant's foliage is quite nice. It's actually soothing to be around it. Perhaps I should purchase one for my room. Oh yeah, the TV. Whoa! What is it, Detective Gumshoe? My TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, pal. Then perhaps you should purchase a more normal-sized television like this one. Ooh, let me see here. Wow, this thing's huge. Ah! And way too noisy! You're the noisy one, Scrappy. Don't touch it. You'll get your fingerprints all over it. But I didn't touch it! Preservation of the crime scene is the foundation of detective work. The foundation, huh? Sounds like something the rookie here needs to shore up on. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. There's still something I find very peculiar here. The theory that they simply killed one another is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there is actually a contradiction that shows there is another possibility. No way, pal. Really? Hmm. I suppose I will just have to show you the contradiction in this crime scene. I won't rest until I've detected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. It's right here in his right hand. Is this spot connected to any of my other evidence I hold? Yeah. His fountain pen. Eureka! Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of, and it is this. Mr. Fade uses his left hand to write with his fountain pen. Ergo, he is left-handed, and yet the handgun in his right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left-handed Mr. Faraday would hold the gun in his right hand? That, ladies and gentlemen, is the great contradiction haunting this crime scene. Hey, you're right, pal. That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? The facts add up to one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Mr. Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags scattered on the floor and a gun in the wrong hand. I sense the presence of a shadowy figure behind this case. A person of vile intent who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Investigation complete. Sorry it took a bit longer. September 10th, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Here's the autopsy report. It is probable that Mr. Rell survived for a short time after he was shot. However, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously from his stabbing. Interesting. It looks like we now know everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of course. The incident began when Mr. Faraday attempted to get his revenge. The prosecution went into a rage from being accused and then tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. It's all very clear and simple. There is absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that to be the truth? Ha! Are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? That you don't want to believe it's true? Nah. It's alright. If you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry. I will. Argument. What happened? Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous while Mr. Rell survived for a short time. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. And Mr. Rell, while on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. Those are the facts of this case. Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous. Therefore, he must have attacked first. Proving that logic to be false is probably the fastest way to show her that she's wrong. In that case, I should first look for any holes in a theory. Let's do that. Commence the rebuttal. Mm. 
Mr. Faraday's death was instantaneous while Mr. Rell survived for a short time. From this, it is obvious that Mr. Faraday died after he shot Mr. Rell. And Mr. Rell, when on the brink of death, stole Mr. Faraday's knife and stabbed him. So you believe at the dying Mr. Rell stole the knife from Mr. Faraday? Mr. Rell became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do amazing things when they are put to the test. So the two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Faraday. The messy condition of his room is a testament of their struggle. Yes, my logic is perfectly sound. Can you really say that it's perfect? What are you insinuating? Nothing. However, I can't let what you said slide by without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise, so if you could append that statement to your testimony. Fine. They struggled, and Mr. Rell used the last of his strength to counterattack Mr. Faraday. I don't know. Let's see what the testimony has to say about that. If the two men were fighting, their struggle would have surely caused quite a bit of noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified that he heard absolutely nothing. Ha! You place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How then did Mr. Rell get his hands on the knife? Mr. Faraday's bag was sitting right here in lobby number two. It is not hard to imagine that perhaps Mr. Rell saw a chance and took it out at some point. So, what you're saying is this. Mr. Rell took a chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the bag. And then Mr. Faraday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Isn't there something strange in Francisca's statement just now? Yeah, something's off. Wait, something doesn't add up. Oh, really? It's simply not possible for Mr. Faraday to have shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed. Present the crime scene notes. Take that! According to the coroner's report, Mr. Faraday died instantaneously. Meaning that he died immediately upon being stabbed by the knife. Ergo, he could not possibly have fired the gun after that. Ooh, you got me. But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then there is only one correct explanation. If we suppose that Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Faraday, who died instantaneously, would have been unable to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stabbed Mr. Faraday after he was shot. Then they both died. That is the only explanation that makes logical sense. Negating your opponent's ideas in order to prove your own theory. I see you've been studying, Francis. I just wanted to explain it to you as simply as possible, before you foolishly propose a foolish theory that only a foolish fool like you could. Hmm. How naive are you to believe that only your opinions are valid, and still expect to discover the truth at the crime scene officer? Francisco, you've still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Mr. Faraday died instantly. And the fact that he died is what gives rise to the contradiction in this scene. The contradiction here in this crime scene is the order that the bodies fell. Let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Mr. Faraday took the gun from his evidence bag and shot Mr. Rell. Then, the wounded Mr. Rell found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. Upon being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot, and Mr. Rell died thereafter. In that case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order in which their bodies are piled. No! Mr. Faraday's body is lying on top of Mr. Rell's. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have died before Mr. Faraday. Impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange no matter what angle you approach it from. Which means that the real mystery behind this crime scene that we must solve is... No! Not so fast, Miles Edgeworth! What now? I simply think that you ought to think a bit more outside the box that it's even clearer now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. She sure bounced back quickly. An explanation won't be enough this time. It's going to take some very decisive evidence to prove her wrong. What happened, part two? It was just chance that Mr. Faraday's body fell on top of Mr. Rell's. The two bodies fell on a pile. 
which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the slightest that they fell in the opposite order. I just know that Francisca's explanation isn't absolutely correct. All I have to do is find a hole in her logic. Once I do, I can then present her with the evidence that proves the contradiction. Here we go. It was just chance that Mr. Friday's body fell on top of Rel's. The two bodies fell into a pile, which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. Hold it. What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? I assume Mr. Faraday had the two different weapons in his hands. He made to attack Mr. Rel while holding both the knife and revolver. And then, after Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Rel grabbed the knife as he was falling and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Rel wound up on the bottom with Mr. Faraday on top. At close range, that is more than possible. Yes, it's possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas, then show me what you've got! Oh, I will. And to that extent, I'd like for you to append what you just said to your testimony. <laughs> I don't see any point to that, but as you please. That fact indicates that they attacked each other at the same time from close range. Really? How about this? Objection! So you believe they killed each other at close range? Sorry, that's impossible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes. The firing of the handgun did not leave a gunpowder burn on Mr. Rell's clothes. Therefore, Mr. Rell and the gun must have been separated by a distance of at least two or three yards. Ah! Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. The two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun was fired from a distance. And with there being no chance that Mr. Rell moved that far after being shot, that leaves only one possible explanation. What a completely foolish line of foolish thought from a thoroughly foolish fool! If I'm not right, then who was it that made the first move with the intent to kill, huh? Who? The person that attacked first with murderous intent? That would be... neither. Here in this room? Contradictions appear no matter which man we claim attacked first. Thus, there can only be one explanation. There was... a third person here. It was that third person who killed both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell, and set their bodies up to make it look like a double murder. That third person is the real culprit. Miles Edgeworth, there's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you've set up until now is nothing but a story played out in your head. However, this is where the real test begins. Yeah. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in this crime? Of course. If a third person was truly here, that fact would resolve the glaring contradiction. The proof that this has all been a setup made it look like they killed each other. I'll present it and lay bare the final piece of the puzzle that's not yet in place. What is the piece of evidence that proves there is a third person involved? The plastic bag. <laughs> The gun in Mr. Faraday's hat and the plastic bag with his blood on it. Those two items point to the presence of a third person. How so? Recall Detective, ba G Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. If there wasn't a struggle in this room, then there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground, meaning that someone else must have deliberately scattered them around. Do you not see the possibility in this? Disregarding the gun for the moment, there's a high probability of blood splatter when a knife is used on a person. If the culprit held a knife with a plastic bag around it, they could use the bag to catch any blood splatter from when they withdrew the knife. Then by spreading a few more plastic bags around, mixing the bloody one in with them, and arranging the room to make it look like there was a struggle between the two, they were able to conceal their presence. Looks like we've still got a long way to go on this investigation. Yes. Objection! 
This sounds a bit better. What the heck's up with you, pal? Miss, Mr. Bad, I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? What's the meaning of this? Huh. Looks like you're not mad enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't you dare. That detective claims he was there standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have it on good authority that it was all a giant lie. Miss Yu, I ask that you please explain that last statement. I'll let his honor explain it himself. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bad, so I ask you, why would a detective who was supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie? Gumshoe, did you? Did you kill Faraday? No! Of course not, sir! It would appear... It would appear that the one who set this whole crime scene up is that detective. Which basically renders his testimony a complete lie and wholly invalid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come tumbling down, Miles. <sighs> I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. Was that statement really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you're now a suspect in the murder of two men. Now spit out the truth or so help me. I... I haven't lied to anyone, sir! Honest! I really was really there! I was in the hallway the whole time! Detective Bad, I ask that you please do not act without my permission. After all, I am the one that is heading up this investigation. Am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy. All I want is for this investigation to run perfectly. Perfection is the only wish of a disciple of Von Karma, after all. Therefore, before you take Detective Gumshoe into custody, I'd like to set the record straight on something. And what's that? What should I ask Detective Gumshoe about? The motive for the murders. I suppose the one thing I'd like to clarify is Detective Gumshoe's motive for committing this crime. <laughs> Motive? Huh. Gumshoe? You got a grudge against Farday or anything? N no, sir! Not me! Not a single bad thing against Mr. Farday, sir! Is that a fact? Objection! You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you! I am not lying! The more unnaturally you act, the more suspicious you become. If you want a motive, Edgeworth, I have one for you right here. Could you please share it with us? However, be forewarned that I won't hesitate to object to flights of fancy. Because all I'm interested in is the perfect explanation. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? Fine. You amuse me, so I'll humor you with a little courtroom practice. Test argument. Gumshoe's motive. It was... about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. F Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? You totally misunderstand me, pal. No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge. Quiet. We can't trust anything you say. Sir. Mm. There's nothing wrong with the motive she proposed, per se. But there are some gaps in her logic that need to be filled in. Miss Yu's perfect explanation may not be so perfect at all. At least the objective in this is sounds a lot better than how it was in the DS. It just lacked emotion. It was about a week ago. I saw the detective get chewed out by a livid Faraday in front of the precinct. He stood there super pale as Mr. Faraday yelled, That's a salary cut for you, you nitwit. A brand new detective suddenly getting a salary cut. That's reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for the perfect explanation? You call your explanation perfect? 
Is it not to your liking? Unfortunately for you, it's just not up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Yes! Alright, if you could clear this one thing up for me, I want, like, the motive for killing Mr. Rell. I understand Detective Gumshoe's potential motive for killing Mr. Farday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Rell? His motive for killing Rell? Like I would know. Hmm. <laughs> If there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident would have occurred. Wouldn't you agree? Is there anyone else who might have had a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? That's impossible! She must know something! <laughs> Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. I didn't even do anything and you're already laughing away! Well anyway, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one or the two, this crime would have played out the way it did anyway. Oh? Would you care to explain your logic? And this time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. Perfect this, perfect that! Stop being so uptight, or is that a requisite trait for being avant karma? <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, I demand that you shut this rude woman up! I wish you'd both be quiet for just one second. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'll just have to explain it to you kids. Motive to kill the men. There's no one out there with a motive to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Ralph. All you have really have to establish is that someone had a grudge against one of the two men. Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Faraday's murder. Therefore, he was killed out of necessity and set up to look like they had killed each other. I wonder if that's really true. Is there no one out there with a grudge against both men? I should take another hard look at the evidence for this morning's case. The second KG-8 incident, as people are calling it, involving an embassy staff member. And the two men who both wound up as suspects in the case, is there someone else I'm overlooking was somehow related to them? Why don't we find out? There's no one out there with a motive to kill Mr. Farley and Mr. Rell. Hmm, I'm sorry. What does you have to say about the overview? Miss Yu, I believe there is someone you overlooked in making your statement. Or rather, is it because you'd rather not bring this person up? What do you mean? We are looking for someone with a reason to kill both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rell. I can't think of at least one person that fits the bill. He was the suspect in the original KG-8 incident, and a member of the Kadapian Embassy staff, Mr. Manny Kochi. That's right, the very man who came to visit you earlier out in the hallway. The man who killed a member of the Kadapian Embassy staff, Mr. Rell. And the man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG-8 incident, Mr. Farday. Are you telling me that Mr. Cochin has no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well, I suppose he might have a reason or two. You! You covered for me, pal! Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself. You're still a suspect. Make no mistake about that. The perfect evidence, the perfect testimony. These are the only things I wish to hold. But I, but I didn't do it! Hmm. You will stay under my authority and go investigate Mr. Manny Coach in the And remember, I will not be very forgiving should any of this leak out. You want to investigate Cochin? You'd just be wasting your time. And why is that? Cochin was up in the viewing gallery watching the trial, or so I was told. Every cop in this place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. Then the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. I suppose so. No way! Come on, Detective Bad! You gotta believe me, sir! I really was in that hallway the whole time, sir! I never took a single step into this room, sir! Okay. Then are you saying there was someone else who passed through the hallway? I, I... No. There was no one else, sir. 
Then why should I believe you didn't do it? That is one incredibly foolish detective. Standing right in front of a crime scene all by himself. It's as good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit, it's a bit strange. Most criminals will fabricate some sort of lie to escape their crimes. And if that detective really wanted to prove that he is innocent, you'd think he would at the very least offer up I spaced out while on duty or the like. Come on, Gumshoe. Time for your interrogation. Detective Bad. Miles Edgeworth, I will go on ahead and report this to Papa. And that, as they say, is that. Right, everyone? <laughs> well, I suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? Before we do, Miss Yu, there is something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? So, what do you want to ask me about? The current case of the murder Kadapian Embassy staff member. I've heard that people have begun calling it the second KG agency. Only among you law enforcement types. And? What about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG-8 incident. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what was reported in the papers. No, I believe you know much more, since you are directly tied to the KG-8 incident. I appreciate if you stuck with the false accusations. Baseless outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you know? I do. I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> Think you can stop making that ultra-serious face in front of me? If you could please stop laughing for just one second! I'm not going to make any headway like this. I'm just going to have to show her exactly how related to the KG-8 incident she is. Yeah, the overview. Miss Yu, I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG-8 incident. That file is your proof? Very well then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I'm related to the KG-8 incident? Through the victim. Your connection to the KG-8 incident is through the victim. The victim's name is Sese Yu. You will know that she has the same last name as you. Can you really still tell me with a straight face that you are not related to this case? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but we're not related. <laughs> Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face. That I couldn't help but... <laughs> Miss Yu, I ask that you please tell me the truth. <clears throat> Alright, I'll tell you everything I know. Fine, let's try it again. As you, as you guessed, the one who reported the smuggling activities of the Amano group was my sister, Sese Yu. As I thought. And she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trial by Manny Kochin. But because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his cushy life completely carefree. Double jeopardy. All because of a lack of evidence. No, I heard that the evidence to convict them did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Faraday himself after Mr. Cochin's trial was over. Apparently, a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. Then the evidence had been tampered with? Isn't it just like a criminal to do something like that? The smuggling ring being run out of the Amano group by one of its secretaries. They bailed Mr. Cochin out. Turns out, they were in league with each other all along. How big was the smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which is why I wanted to become the lead defense on this case that people are calling the second KG-8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. You mean you think this case has nothing to do with a smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. Why did Mr. Cochin want to meet with you earlier? Actually, he came to watch the trial. 
Apparently he only found out that I was a defense lawyer in this case after he'd arrived. He figured he should say hi and one other thing. Looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> oh boy, stop it with the scary face already. I'm fine, really. I gave him a good slap across the face. The way she talks about slapping and as she laughs away is kind of creepy. Ahem. But it's just as Mr. Bat said. He's not related to Double Murder. I asked around and people in the gallery claimed that he was in this seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is about all I know. <laughs> sorry. Guess I wasn't much help, huh? That's not true. I'm sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your life. <laughs> Edgeworth, you really are too serious for your own kind. You really need to learn to relax. We wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for the advice, but there's no need to worry. I work in my own way. And I will catch the criminal in my own way as well. You'll see. <laughs> Look at you with your game face on, ready to go. I... I'm making no such face. Did you know? Laughter is the best medicine, Edgeworth. Don't you get tired of making such a serious face all the time. I'm charged with making sure that all the criminals of this world are found guilty. I... have no need for laughter. There you go, making that face again. Oh well, I've got to get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. The KG-8 incident and this murder investigation. It is my belief that these two cases are related to each other somehow. Plus that detective, Detective Gumshoe. It's obvious he's lying, even though the lie is hurting his chances. Clearly, this case is far from over. But whether or not that detective is the murderer can only be determined once I've completed my perfect investigation. Mr. Von Karma, I swear to uphold your honorable name or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. No two-parter for this one. This is just one big video. Mistakes and all. I'm sorry, but it is what it is. So yeah. That said, if you enjoy it, like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell. I will see you in the next. This is Mega Man NJ signing off. Peace out. Product provided by Capcom.